White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre said today that the president is, quote, absolutely not considering dropping out. Uh, Biden's senior advisor also denied the report, saying that the voters want Biden and that he will be the nominee. Well, here's the thing. The media pundits don't know what to do right now. It's easy when the Democratic Party sending you talking points, but they don't know what to do because some are saying the Democrats are making things worse. They need to rally behind the president and just keep it moving. Some are calling for him to drop, drop out. They say they're only undermining the tickets. Others say the ticket, the presidential ticket, and the down ballot items. They're saying, if you keep running, we're all going to lose. And then there's Mehdi Hassan. My good friend, my good friend and brother over at Zateo, y'all need to check out his channel. Mehdi Hassan said something that I thought was quite interesting. He said Joe Biden should stand aside and endorse Kamala Harris as the Democratic nominee. It is time for those of us who have been loud critics of Harris to make an even louder case for the vice president, because the future of our republic may depend on us doing so. So the question is, is Mehdi right? Or should Democrats take a page from the Republican playbook? Look, they got a nom- they got a nominee. I don't J Trump. He's been indicted four times. He's been impeached twice. He's been convicted as a felon. He is an adjudicated rapist. He is a racist. He is a national security threat. He stole nuclear secrets. People say. I'm just gonna say people say because I don't want to get sued. What did Republicans do? They told him to drop out. They said drop out, double down, ten toes. And he won. And he probably will win again. So in light of that, in light of what do we do? Well, I think Mahdi's right. Joe Biden needs to step down. Joe Biden absolutely needs to step down for two reasons. One, I don't believe, based on what I've seen and based on what the reports I've heard are, that he's going to be capable of running successfully for president and then effectively leading the nation. So if you can't be an effective leader and you can't run the nation, then you shouldn't be president. That's just an ethical issue for me. And if you're going to run the nation, but secretly have Kamala Harris or secretly have your uh, chief of staff running the country, there's a word for that. We call it a coup. (laughs) If, If you have other people come and take over the country and run it for you, thinking that Joe Biden's running it, but you secretly take over the country and you're the commander in chief, that's a coup. It's illegal. You can't do it. So what do you do then? Well, you step aside and you put Kamala Harris in, according to Mehdi Hassan, but here's my issue with that. She can't win. Now, I have my own issues with Kamala Harris. I, I know her, or, uh, I know, I'll say this. I know that she is a decent person and I know that she probably interpersonally is a wonderful person in all my experiences with her. She's been wonderful. Same thing with Joe Biden, but I disagree with them fundamentally in their politics. So I'm never going to, just outright endorse Kamala Harris. But that's not even my issue right now. That ain't even the issue right now. The issue is Kamala Harris in the Democratic primary a couple years, almost four years ago, got, to use a technical political science term, she got mollywhopped. She got mollywhopped by Biden. She got mollywhopped by Sanders. She got mollywhopped by Pete Buttigieg. She can't win. And I'm not saying it's fair. We live in a sexist country. We live in a misogynistic country. We live in a patriarchal country. Uh, A whole lot of people didn't vote for Hillary Clinton, not because they disagree with her ideologically, but because they couldn't wrap their minds around electing Hillary Clinton as president. Kamala Harris has the intersections of race and gender there. So there's lots of people, and it's not just white men, there's a whole lot of black men who don't want to vote for black women. So she has that issue. There are many people who are uh, fundamentally frustrated with Donald, excuse me, with Joe Biden. There are many people fundamentally frustrated with Joe Biden because of his treatment of Israel and Palestine. There is nothing that Kamala Harris has said or done before, during, or after October 7th to make anybody believe that she's different than Joe Biden. So it's not like people are going to say, oh, well, yeah, we got Kamala now, new direction. No, new driver, same direction. And so if Kamala Harris can't win, what do you do? Well, you could look at a certain Matthew McConaughey kind of guy out in California by the name of Gavin Newsom. He's handsome. He looks like he was coming out of Central Cal. I don't have a crush on Gavin Newsom. It may sound like it. I promise you I don't. Um, my wife does. I don't. Um, but 
the point is, he could win. The problem is, black people are not going to allow Gavin Newsom to go around Kamala Harris. Jim Clyburn said as much last week. Not last week. Jim Clyburn said it yesterday that Biden should be the next guy to endorse Kamala Harris if he steps aside. Not the next guy. He should be the first guy to support Kamala Harris if he steps aside. He's saying Kamala's up next. And as Clyburn goes, South Carolina goes. And as South Carolina goes, the South goes. So, at least for Black folk, you can't win the Democratic presidency or even the nomination without Black folk. And if it is perceived, that Gavin Newsom went around Kamala Harris or that, or that Kamala Harris was at all um, disrespected in this process, you lose the black vote. And now Donald Trump wins easily just by plucking 10, 12, 13, 14% of the black vote, which I think he will do anyway. So you're in a hell of a jam. And that jam might be what ends up making Joe Biden stay in the race, not because he's selfish, although I think he is, but because he knows it's an impossible decision to decide his successor. That's a messy place for Democrats to be in. And, you know, I don't I'm, I, I don't feel bad for Democrats. I'm a Green Party member. I don't feel bad for Democrats because they could have avoided this by having Joe Biden not run for reelection. They knew he wasn't up to it. They knew there was a deeper bench. They could have had a Democratic primary and let Gavin Newsom beat Kamala Harris in the primary and everything would have been fine. Black folk will come around. Don't nobody love white people more than black people. They would have happily voted for Gavin Newsom if Kamala wasn't standing there, you know, getting undermined as vice president. So Democrats brought this on themselves, but all of us are going to pay the price. So we need to figure out a solution right now. And the only solution I think could work is if Gavin Newsom runs and Kamala Harris gives full-throated support to Gavin Newsom um, for president. The more I think about it over this week, that's the only thing that makes sense. And that sucks for Kamala Harris. She should not have to do that. And I would resent every minute of that if I were Kamala Harris. If I were the vice president and a, a former sitting senator, and I had to I had to give full throttle support to somebody who ain't been in this White House, I would feel all the things that she would likely be feeling. So I, I, I'm not saying it's fair to her. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that might be the only way out if the goal is to prevent Donald Trump from being president again. If the goal is to not have a seven to one, or excuse me, seven to two Supreme Court on the conservative side. If the goal is to not have more reduction of civil liberties, if the goal is to not have more people marching through Charlottesville, anti-black, anti-Semitic, anti-gay, if we want more of a possibility to fight for justice, we got to do something different. And it starts, it starts, it starts with Joe Biden stepping aside. And lastly, I know some of y'all are going to say, well, Newsom and Harris, what if they team up? That could work, but let's be clear. People say, well, the civics class says we can't have two Californians. Yeah, it says you can have two Texans too. That's why Dick Cheney, like a day before the election, suddenly re-registered himself in Wyoming instead of Texas. Donald Trump right now is considering Marco Rubio, even though they both registered in Florida. We can work out the details. Don't think I don't know the details. I'm just saying we can work them out later. Right now, we got to work on protecting democracy.